Welcome to Canvas Projects, a virtual program offering from the Pflugerville Public Library. I'm Meg Miller, an adult services librarian, here with another fun project geared to ages 12 and up for you to complete. Those who registered through the library calendar can pick up their material supply kits, and for everyone else watching, we hope you give these techniques a try. This month's project is a textured tissue paper canvas. Let's start with a look at the supplies being provided. So in our plastic bags this month, um, it does say just a few things, and I was wrong about the canvas size. Um, what we have is actually a little 4 by 6 canvas panel. Um, some of them are going to be wrapped in plastic. Additionally, you'll have uh, some Mod Podge, and this is just the matte Mod Podge, um, protected in its own little baggie. Hopefully nothing will spill out. Additionally, we're providing five of the two ounce little cups without lids that we're going to use to make up mix up our podge with our paper um, i did get these uh kind of cheapy little tweezers so that you don't have to get in there with your hands um, and get them all sticky but um, and additionally two craft sticks of the smaller variety so that we can help mix um, we are providing you with about seven different colors seven eight different colors of tissue paper the blues are pretty close together. Um, we got a red and kind of a darker pink. Uh, just quarter square of the sheet. Um, additionally to what's in the kit, you will want some water. I've just got a little half water bottle that was left in the lab here um, that I'm going to use because I'm going to water down my Mod Podge. And that is what's going to give me my different colors. And actually, I see here, I gave myself an extra cup. We'll set that one off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and use my plastic bag as uh, protection for my work surface. Since the Mod Podge is a glue, it is could get sticky. Um, as this dries, though, I would not leave it on the plastic just because of the possibility of it getting um, stuck to it. Uh, so I've got plastic on this canvas. I'm just using my little tweezers to go ahead and start that process of removal just to get my canvas ready to go set that off to recycle a little later um, now what I'm going to do is take my tissue paper pieces and I'm going to tear them up into tiny tiny little bits um, so let's start with this orange and just make myself a little pile of orange tissue paper bits. The smaller I went with these pieces, uh, kind of the better I felt I got with um, the tissue paper once it had the glue on it so that it would kind of set nicely uh, in that textured manner where it's sitting up on top of the canvas. You can take make the choice to give yourself a little bit of a very thin Mod Podge layer to your canvas to help your um, tissue paper stick right away. Although what the tissue paper will be soaked in should be really more than enough to adhere it to the canvas and kind of keep it there. And for purposes of our video, I'm not going to tear up the whole sheet, just maybe a little over a quarter of it. some of those pieces bigger definitely want one of the blues I could make this process go a little bit faster so I'm just going to start folding down my pieces and kind of tearing this way as much as I can so that I get to those smaller bits a little faster I preferred this method over this method so yes this method does get me to small pieces a lot faster because I'm peeling multiple layers but they're really stacked on top of each other and you see how this pile really has a little bit more um, width to it so I definitely would want to peel these layers apart before I put them in the glue mixture because otherwise they'll just kind of be flat and they'll adhere to themselves right away and you won't really get that good tissue paper mixture that you can get that textured look with so while you save a little time in the tearing you kind of get 
to have to use that time again at the end to separate all your layers so that you get a good texture. That's probably pretty good for there. Now you can see my pile size basically doubled and that's not even separating every single tiny little piece. This project I felt like was a really fun one. You could do something abstract like our example. Um, I really started with kind of just this blue line in the middle and then added around. What I decided I didn't like by the end, um, I'm not giving anyone white tissue paper if you've got it and you'd like to use it, but it seemed to draw some of the colors from the pieces around it and got a little muddied. I also, if you can kind of tell, I mixed colors here and I felt like that kind of muddied the waters. This is just all of my little pieces left over and it really didn't translate well. Um, so for today, I'm going to avoid doing that and I'm going to kind of stick to just the colors themselves. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of my water and add to three. I'm going to start with three. I'm going just over, there's a little notch at the bottom of your cup. I'm going about the same height over it. So I want this Mod Podge to be pretty well um, watered down. All right, let's open my podge. I'm gonna use one of my craft sticks. If you've got a little spoon or something, you could also do that that you use for crafting. I'm just gonna add probably not quite the same amount. I would say if you wanna be very kind of spot on, go for about a two to one or a three to one ratio between water and Mod Podge. And then I'm just going to use my craft stick to mix that right up. And that one actually might be a little heavy on the water. Same for this guy. I wouldn't use the Mod Podge as is without watering it down. I feel like that might make um, be a little bit too thick um, for the glue. If you wanted to fill your cups first with Mod Podge, and do that and then of course once you get down kind of towards the end you can just use this little cup add some water to it because you don't have exactly the amount of cups as you do colors of um, tissue paper once you got through one but if you wanted to do this in a kind of more of a manner where you have a palette situation where you're really you know, you know exactly where you're going to put everything and you want to do it in a row. You can kind of set out your colors from the get go. So I'm going to take my orange and I'm just going to drop all my little pieces in there. Doo -doo. And I'm really going to get them soaked. Really get it down in there. And now with this amount of liquid, I would definitely want more tissue paper in there for our purposes i think we're all right to go and the same i'm going to use a little less of the mixture for this guy we get our blue pieces in there get some of them in mix them down get some more making sure i don't have any piles because remember this is the stack that i tore up all together so I want to separate those pieces to make sure I get a good amount. Uh, if you wanted to, if your preference was, you could take a pencil and kind of sketch out your ideas on your canvas first or just kind of work free form. Get all our blue in there. Really get that soaked. Come off my my craft stick because it's glue so it wants to just stick on there All right. Let's get a little mixture here because this is our February canvas project and in February we have another really fun signature event that we do that is our romance reader social 
And this year it's happening on Saturday, February 10th from 2 to 4. So I think the design I'm going to do for this one is going to be to give me a little heart in the center. And then I might even try to build out. So build my other colors around. You could do a, a letter. You could do something that's more of a natural. Um, when I was looking at examples for this some trees or some flowers would do really well i got a little bit of the mixture on my fingers so now this tissue paper doesn't want to let go and this i'm just tearing straight into my little tub and i don't really have a preference for the shape of my pieces because it's all going to mix down in there we go. Get down in there. Don't try to run away. Really just, and so this mixture was a little bit thicker, a little bit more gluey. You can kind of see it there. I do want a little more of that pink. We'll go to about the half since it'll be the biggest shape on my canvas. This is, might be a great project. You can get, um, if you've got a couple of random pieces of tissue paper left over in your gift wrapping box or from Christmas. You could find some that have glitters on them. Patterns might not translate that well in a project like this, um, but it could just give you a really cool color. All right, so this I can see, this mixture needs a little bit more water. I'm slowly gonna add water. I don't wanna overdo it right off the bat. All right, there we go. And where's my other craft stick? I have buried it under tissue paper. Here you are. If you seem to be getting some lumps, one of the things I did um, is I would get in there with my two craft sticks and just kind of pull them apart from each other, trying to separate that tissue paper and really get you some nice small pieces. All right, that should be good. My blue is not underwater or under the mixture. I'll do the same thing to the blue, especially because it was those larger pieces or maybe some stacked. The orange, though, the orange was great. And so of these three, this mixture is probably a little light on the water, a little heavy on the glue. This mixture is pretty close to okay. I like to have a little bit of liquid in there. For the orange here, this is, a, I would say, maybe definitely too much liquid. But as I move, as I use those pieces of tissue paper, I can just add to that mixture. So let's get started. I'm not going to draw on mine. I'm just going to go for it. If you've watched any of these videos, you know that's kind of my, my MO. And since I've got a pretty big heart I want to do on there, I'm just going to put myself a nice big glob and start to shape. I can move my pieces. If I had taken and put uh, Mod Podge, this mixture, on straight onto the canvas, I might not be able to move it as easily as you see me doing here, um, but I also might not have any issues with it moving kind of when I don't want it to. Oh, that's going to be the perfect amount for our little heart. I'm just kind of tapping it down. Additionally, this project is going to take a few days for it to dry out. You'll be able to tell once it has this, um, the glue really dries kind of stiff onto the canvas. So I have a couple of parts on this one where it's pretty pointy, but for about two days afterwards, I could kind of squish down a little bit and feel that it wasn't moving. All right, so let's grab some of our blue and I'm just going to try and make myself a little outline. I can get in here with my fingers. If that is your preferred method of kind of manipulating your materials while you're making art, that totally works. And one of the great things with this, maybe a little different than a traditional painting, is we've got such time to work with our materials. Like this, like I said, this is going to take a few days to really dry out. So this first day as I'm making it, I really have 
the ability to kind of move things around, take a look at it, decide, you know, maybe I want to give it, oh, I think the blue might go all the way around. I wasn't sure it would. And then see kind of where I'm at. Oh, uh, maybe not quite, but that'll be all right. I already had kind of in my head that it wouldn't. So here's another little piece of blue. Soak it up. There we go. So I've got kind of the bottom of the heart there. Let's go to this orange. I also think this project could be done on a, um, a stapled canvas, so one of the thicker ones. I did choose the canvas panel for this project just because, ooh, I'm feeling a very sacred heart kind of image as I get to this. So I think I'm going to run with that and put this in a little bit more of like a flame type shape coming out the top. fully cover. But I, I don't know if you can see that there really is a lot of liquid to this orange. So that is probably something. Oh, there it goes. Again, why I'm covering the table. I can kind of do that and my tissue paper isn't going to move too much. I wouldn't flip this over. This is not a uh, Dairy Queen Blizzard situation where it's really going to um, completely stick to the canvas just yet. It's going to need that drying time. But as always, we hope that you enjoy these projects. We'd love to see what your final products look like. And we hope you look forward to next month. Thanks for watching.